already discussed about the linear regression and today we will discuss about the metrics of the linear regression. So today we will discuss about the metrics of the linear regression. And a part of the multiple linear regression also will be discussed today. <clears throat> On Friday, there will be a class and uh, which will be based on the three things. One is the pandas, another is the PMI SQL, and the database connectivity between the Python and the MySQL. These three things we I will taught you on Friday. After that, we will go to the project work. Right. So in this week, we will uh, the in uh, as far as uh, from the TCS Global side as uh, I came to know that uh, we will have to give an outline of the <clears throat> data science. So in that respect, uh, the up to multiple linear regression is okay for you. And there is no need to go forward for the uh, machine learning. Yeah. So we will wrap up the machine learning today in up to multiple re regression. <clears throat> And then on Friday, we will go to the Pandas, MySQL, and the database connectivity between Python and the MySQL. So I think I had made it clear for the project work. And after that, we will move towards the project. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay,
सर योर माइक इज ऑफ Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, no. Yes, sir. Now audible. Yes, sir. Audible. In the last class, we had discussed the all these things, uh, the prediction. We had discussed the regression, how to re de develop our regression model. And the interception, the all these things, and my training the set, testing the set. So evaluate uh, all these things I had discussed in the last class. So today we will evaluating the model, the model which we had built. We want to evaluate the model, and this evaluation of model is mainly done on the supervised machine learning. So how this evaluation of the model is done, the evaluation of this model is done through the three different metrics, the mean absolute error, mean squared error, and the root mean squared error. So for mean absolute, so these three metrics can evaluate the model, whether my predicted value, the predicted model, that is y pred, or the predicted value is uh, is how much it is accurate to the y test that is my actual value so we will calculate these things and these things are calculated uh, by means of these metrics so mean absolute error is basically we subtract the predicted value from the actual value. 
and obtain the errors that is the sum of the absolute values of those errors and get their mean so subtracting the actual value and uh, with the predicted value and we will get the certain errors and we will sum those errors with the mean value so this is the so this is in the um, from the matrix of the mean absolute error so this is ma mae means mean absolute error is equal to 1 by n means the number of the terms or number of the predicted values n summation of i equal to 1 to n mod value of actual minus predicted value so we will take the only the absolute value over here next is the mean squared error it is similar to the uh, me matrix that is a mean absolute error but it squares the absolute values of the errors also with the mean absolute error or closer to zero the better the mean squared error value is the squared so as to make the large errors even larger one thing to pay close attention to it is that it is usually a hard metric to interpret due to the size of its values of the fact that they are not, aren't the same scale of data so mean squared error value is basically here we are subtracting the actual value with the predicted value and we take the mod of that these values and we will get a particular error and the summation of those error divide by the mean we will number of the errors we will get the mean absolute error so mean absolute mean squared error is basically the square of this actual and the predicted value <clears throat> so mean absolute error so this is The mean absolute error is the is the modulus of the actual value minus the predicted value summation of i equal to 1 to n so we will get the first error e1 plus e2 plus e3 right and then we divide with the number of the uh, items n so that will get we will get any that is on the mean absolute error now <clears throat> in the mean squared error value is uh, is similar to the mean absolute error metric right so just a minute So, sorry. So, in the mean squared error, it is similar to the mean absolute error. That means here we just square of this term that means it becomes more lesser so it will be more smaller so the error will be more minimized if you square those things the error will be more minimized so my actual value minus the predicted value their square divide by the i equal to one to total number of data items divide is equal to the mean squared error so in mean squared error, 
the error should be known more or less because we are squaring these values. The error will be more smaller in the compared to the mean squared error. For root mean square, root mean square is basically the square root. This is basically the square root of the actual minus predicted value. That is the square root of the, that is the square root of the mean squared error is the root mean square error. So root of this is the root mean squared error, right? So in order to get the, all these things, we have to use a library function from sklearn.metrics. Metrics is a library from we from, and we have to import what kind of error we want to calculate that we will import. If you want to calculate the mean absolute error or mean squared error, then we will import the mean absolute error or the, we can import the mean squared error. And then we test the, the two things. One is the target value, another is the predicted value. And we will get ultimately the, uh, the result of how much the mean absolute error is 3.92. Here mean squared error is 18.94. But the actual root mean squared is 4.35, right? So the actual and the, all of the all of our errors are low, and we are missing the actual value by 4.35, at most lower or higher, which is pretty small range considering the data we have. See the 4.35, we are so these this is also the this is also a minimize error this is also a minimize error so we see that from these two we can calculate that whether my my model is very much accurate or not right so the error is 3.92 which is absolutely near it which is 4 approximately towards 4 and this is 4.35 so my model is uh, nearer to the accurate, to the predict to our uh, actual value.
हेलो सर योर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल got it no oh, sir uh, for just a moment i didn't heard your voice sir So these are the actual values. These are the predicted values. Now I want to evaluating the model. How much error is present? So this is eighty one. This is eighty three point one eight, one eight eight one four one. This is thirty. This is twenty seven point zero three two zero double eight. So I want to see how much error is over here. so i want to evaluate the model so in that respect <clears throat> this is my y pred and this is my y test so i want to compare the y pred with y test right so there are different evaluation techniques are over here so these techniques the model is evaluated by three different techniques one is the mean absolute error mean squared error and the root mean squared error so mean absolute error is basically the actual value minus predicted value mod of the actual value minus a predicted value sum summation of i equal to n that is the number of the items divide by 1 by n so divide by the total number of items i will get the mean value so this is my actual value this is my predicted value and i will take always the absolute value since there is a modulus is over here so divide of uh, the total number of the items i will get the mean absolute error so this is the uh, the formula of the mean absolute error right so next is the root mean square so root means mean square error or the mean square error is basically the square the square of this actual and predicted value see the square of the actual mean predicted value right another is the root mean square which is basically the square root of this this is root mean square now we see that the, in the in this we are for calculating the for evaluating the model from a scalar and dot matrix i have to matrix is basically a library from for uh, for which the different error calculations can be made and from sqlr dot matrix i am importing the two errors absolute and the mean squared error we can here also but in the output it is seen that root mean square is also there 
So root mean square is nothing but the square root of the mean squared error. That is why the two absolute error and mean squared error has been import has been import. So I this is always uh, import numpy as np and then as the mean squared error and the root mean squared error and is defined in the matrix and matrix is defined in numpy so that is why i am importing the numpy as np then i am calculating this y test and y print i'm calculating the y test and the y print so i'm passing the values of y test and y print both in mean squared error, mean absolute error and mean squared error and making the square root of this mean squared error i am getting root mean squared error so you don't have to write this 2f and 2f without writing these you can able to run it is seen that in the mean square mean absolute error the the error value is 3.92 which is nearer to the four and root mean square, it is also to the four. So these two uh, values are more or less are identical. So I think then the 4% of error is over there. From here, I can conclude that uh, my model is accurate. Right? I have got it, what I say. I will have got it. Yes, sir. So now in a multiple linear regression, what is a multiple linear regression? That's we see that when, it, when the data set has two variables, X and Y, and we go to the simple linear regression. Uh, in multiple linear regression, the formula is basically a little different. And we see that in multiple linear regression, the formula is basically y equal to uh, beta naught beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x two 
plus beta three x three plus dot 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 up to beta n x n. So this is uh, the multiple linear regression, multiple linear regression uh, equation, right? In simple linear regression is we will consider only y is equal to b0 plus b1 of x, right? So this is a simple linear regression. But this is multiple linear regression. All right. Where we have one predictor variable, when we have one predictor variable and one coefficient, then we say that it is a multiple, a simple linear regression. But uh, in multiple linear regression, we have multiple predictor variables, right? So, in so this is basically uh, this is also a linear. This is also linear. So this is so it may be create a two linear line, which may intercept over here. But here only one linear line, which intercept with y axis, right? So this is also linear, this is linear. Here many lines may intersect here, this way, this way, this way. So if this thing happens, then we called it as multiple linear regression. But in simple linear regression, we are considering only one regression line, right? So when the target variable, both of them, well, the target variable is continuous and we are finding the regression where the target variable is categorical, then we called it as a classification problem. Until this point, we have predicted a value with linear regression using one variable. If there is a different scenario that we can consider when we predict using many variables instead of one. And this is also much more common scenario in real life where many things can affect some result, right? So they give an example over here. So In multiple linear regression, we also use the pandas and numpy. And uh, from there, we will create this path, but I had uh, shown it in a different way. Please don't do this in this manner. What I had shown it, only give the path in that way. And then we you can define the data frame you will get the data frame wire by writing df dot head. I will import the whole data set into the Python environment. If I want to make it describe and a round value, then it gives these things. Now you don't have to go these things. It is a Pearson coefficient linear model. You don't have to go these things right now.
Now I had told you that matplotlib and seaborn are the two library functions which are used in Python for the data visualization. Here also we use the seaborn. You can also use in the matplotlib for data value visualization and you uh, by data visualize data can be visualized by showing the figure and you can plot plt dot figure with the data you will get the we will get, uh, you can make a figure out how the data set are arranged so in here we get that the data set are scattered the data set are scattered in this manner so from where the data set the two lines goes we the data set and intersected the line passes through this line through those points of the data set right So after that, we will de uh, define the correlation. We will get the heat map of the data set. Now these points. So these are the demand marketed point rate points are basically termed as the outliers that is they are not needed so the line through through which the line the data the data points which are nearer to those line by which the line passes only those data sets we will consider Otherwise, these are basically they, they, these data points are far away from the data line. So they are basically termed as outliers. Right. So these demarked points are basically in the outliers. So this is the equation of the multiple regression y is equal to b0, beta1, x, x1, b2, x2, b3, x3, b and x, y, n. This is basically the linear regression line analysis of multiple regression. Now again, we are entering in the same manner as we do in the simple linear regression. That is the petrol consumption and the average income. That is petrol consumption is our targeted value and the rest are our the predicted columns. From there, we will split the data set into the trend set and test set that is for building a model and other for evaluating the model. So after that, we, we have to, in order to, you know, before I told you in the last class, before you want to develop in the model or you want to fit the model, you fit the data set into the particular model, then we must have to reshape or shape in the data set. Otherwise it will show there. So that is whether our dimension are identical or not that we will check with the help of the shape. After uh, calibrating our data model or scaling the model, we are creating the linear regression using the regressor and regressor. And then we fit the data model into the data set. Right. So, in order to that, do that, we have to build first the linear regression model. So we build the linear regression model using regressor. And after that, we will 
uh, fit the data set into the model that is our the regression model then that is why we are writing regressor dot fit uh, using the the train what we are doing that is for for building the model the data set which are necessary that is the x train and y train we are just we are fitting the model into the data set now we are we want to fitting the data set into the model Now, from where do the interception takes place that we also calculated in this manner. So, the line of interception is 361.450. So, this is the point of intercept interception. We will get to the coefficient of the regressor. So from there we get the coefficient corresponding coefficient values. In the same way, what we had did in the simple linear regression, the same code. That is, uh, we have to evaluate them. Uh, we have to build the model using train set and test set. After building the train set, train and test set, we have to predict the model, and we use this. In order, we have to predict the model, and we predict with the X test. So the result. Uh, so this is why pred. And then we compare our predicted value with the actual value. Right. So y pred is equal to regressor dot predict to x test and y test. And then we compare the predicted value with the actual value. So pd dot data frame, we get the actual value. Test set is the actual value. Uh, uh, test set uh, actually is our actual value and the predicted value is our y pred. So it is seen that our actual values are very, our predicted values are very nearer to the actual values. For After that, we will evaluate the model using different metrics in the similar way as we did in the simple linear regression. So it is, uh, um, we measured our model that how much error is then there, we will measure it by the different kinds of metrics we are using. That is how much of the percentage of error is present with the, the uh, how much accurate is our model, which is determined by means of the errors. So in mean absolute error, it is seen 53.47. Squared error is 4,000. Uh, 803.26 and the value of the root mean square is 63.90 which means the model is right uh, gets prediction run uh, prediction or for wrong adding by adding the subtract or or by adding or subtracting 6 63.90 from the actual value it would be better to have this error closer to zero, but 63.90 is a big number. This indicates our model is not predicting very well, obviously.
So here also the multiple linear regression and the error is calculated by means of the R square, which is one minus the actual minus predicted square divided by actual minus the actual mean. So this is the R square, R square gives the matrix values. If you want to calculate the matrix value in terms of percentage. So R square gives in the uh, values, metric values ranging from zero to 100%. So here we compare with actual and to the predicted value that is the coding over here. And we get the value of R then we compare the scorecard with the predicted value and the actual value and we see that the result is this which is basically a 39 percent of our test data which is not a good result it means that it leaves 61 percent of the test data is unexplained so so i think it is more fitted that is 70 percent so it will be more fitted multiple linear regression Okay, so this is uh, what the, the two machine learning algorithm <clears throat> uh, that is simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. Have you got it? Have you got it? Yes, sir. Okay. I have a question, sir. Uh, Hello, sir. Can I ask? Sir? Yes. So, if uh, the error is so high, so what we can as next step then if the error is high then if the error is high then our predicted then our model is not so is not accurate then we have to check again with our data right so uh, we will want we uh, we will one then we will calculate we will take another train set, X train set and Y train set. Again, we will scale those particular X train and Y train and compare it with the Y test. We will always try if the error is minimized, then our model is accurate. If the error is uh, very much high, then our model is not accurate. Then we will leave that particular training set and move to the next training set of X train and Y train. And again, we will calculate it whether the model is accurate or not. So I think we will wrap up over today over here and then the on Friday, we will discuss on PHP, 
MySQL. Uh, we will discuss on the, the pandas, MySQL, and database connectivity with Python. Okay, fine. Is that Friday same time class? Same time. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. Good night, sir.